In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. I see you figured out that today's not a school mass. Uh, so I'm glad you're gathered here in the center of the church. Uh, we had school mass with the kids yesterday, and then we'll continue again tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, but today, yes, we're um, uh, praying for um, our elections today. And um, our saint that we celebrate today, I think, is perfect for the occasion, uh, St. Martin de Porres, uh, who is the son of a Spanish nobleman, who is Caucasian on his father's side, and the son of a free African slave on his mother's side. And so, um, kind of encompasses, you know, uh, the mixture of these worlds, which I think uh, is what we experience here in America. Uh, so there's so much to be prayed for, and he, uh, I think, is a great patron saint for us to turn to today. And as we celebrate his life and his dedication to the poor and the impoverished, let us bring to mind our own sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who led St. Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory, grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul. Brothers and sisters, have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found in human appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm, I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear him. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts be ever merry. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. For dominion is the Lord's, and he rules the nations. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. 
To him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of God. He replied to him, A man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his, ser- sorry, dispatched his servant to say to those invited, Come, everything is now ready. But one by one they all began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have purchased a field and must go to examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen and am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have just married a woman, and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house, in a rage, commanded his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town, and bring in here the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant reported, Sir, your orders have been carried out, and still there is room. The master then ordered the servants, Go out to the highways and hedgerows, and make people come in that my home may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. So um, this is going to be a very, very short homily, uh, which I'm sure you're very excited about. Uh, I have a meeting in Indianapolis at 11 o'clock, so once we finish with Mass, um, I will uh, head over to the Adoration Chapel, and we will process over uh, with the Blessed Sacrament to install him on the altar uh, for the remainder of the day, uh, of course, to pray for the election uh, and for our nation. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I think it is very uh, providential that today we celebrate St. Martin de Porres, who himself um, was in the midst and embroiled in, in so much of the politics of his day, um, so much um, you know, of this clash of uh, racial tensions of his time and um, the new world and the old world colliding. In fact, it was so much a time of transition that uh, he very much desired to join the religious life and was denied uh, because his mother was a freed African slave. And so he basically became like a volunteer, you know, for the religious order, not really a full-fledged member. But despite all of that, he dedicated himself entirely to Christ. He cared compassionately about his fellow man to the point that through him, God worked some amazing miracles of healing. It was said that when Martin de Porres would attend Mass and he would be in the presence of our Lord, he was so enthralled in prayer and so in love with the sacrament that he would levitate off the ground, that he would literally become light as air. And so on this election day, let us pray for our nation, let us pray for all the divisiveness, all the divisions. Let us do so trusting entirely in the Lord, focusing on Him, falling in love with Him, because that's what we do as Catholics. That's what St. Martin de Porres did. And if we do that, then God's will will be done. Amen.
Let us stand and bring our prayers and petitions before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for Pope Francis, for Archbishop Charles Thompson, and for all church leaders, that they may continue to uh, preach a message of hope in the gospel, uh, preaching a message of falling in love with our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all elected officials, um, especially those who will be elected um, in today's election, uh, that they be guided by God's wisdom and the Holy Spirit to enact laws that promote the life and dignity of every human being who is created in the image and likeness of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the members of our parishes here at St. Patrick's and St. Margaret Mary's, that each one of us, in following the example of St. Martin de Porres, will commit ourselves entirely to the Lord, entrusting our hearts and our souls to His providential care. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and the religious life, that those who are being called by God to live such a life of service may hear that call and answer it. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are sick and suffering, especially for any family members of those gathered here, um, any who are suffering from COVID-19, that they, um, as we uh, honor St. Martin de Porres and some of the miracles that he performed, that they may also feel God's healing touch. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the uh, special intentions for Bonnie March, uh, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died or who will die this day, that they may join St. Martin de Porres and all the angels and saints in the heavenly homeland when they will finally see our God face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious Father, we thank you for the many gifts that you have given us, but especially for this day and this opportunity to place our trust wholly in you. We ask now that you hear these our prayers and those that we keep in the secrets of our heart, and by granting them, make us holy in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Most merciful God, who were pleased to create in Blessed Martin the new man in your image, the old having passed away, graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like him, we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.